they've come through this shift in themselves and their perception of things and the abandon issue is not there anymore. It's just not there. So let's give them a vacation. So I say, when I count to three, you will just be in the light of God. Nothing else going on. And then they are. So two directives. One is to the review period, and the other is consciously calling, well, it's not a directive, I ask Elijah to come in. <clears throat> you could use other great beings also. You could use, you know, Hindu gods that you trust, uh, Christian. It's, it's the principle of that presence being with them that causes a transmutation of the egoic perception of their experience. Then, in the light, they're just bathing in it. And they're in a high altered state. I had one client actually get pissed off at me because I brought her out too soon. It's not unusual for people to say, I don't want to leave this. Ever. This is where excuse me, my home is. Which is really in here, because they're still in my office, <laughs> having the experience in the body on earth. And that's what we're here for. Okay, So they're experiencing the self through the metaphor of the light of God in the heaven worlds. Because they have greater capacity. The veil, or a veil, let's say, created by one of these Hummers is not there. So they can have that. Then we go, okay, now let's take this, this state of just how you are feeling right now in the light of God, it's really who you are, back to the womb and go back to that life and see what happens. Well, that's where it's a whole different paradigm. And they're just going, whoa. Now let's say that when, in that lifetime, in the original version, they had um, experiences of relationships blowing up all over the place. And they ended up dying alone and, and embittered and angry and pissed off and no one will ever love me, I could never have, you know. And now we're not re-scripting, we're not saying what would it be like, we're just saying what is it like now? and you grow up with the presence of this light with you, what happens? Well, I meet a guy when I'm 18, and we really love each other, and I don't experience that mistrust anymore. I can feel that I trust him, and he trusts me. And we get married, we have children, and she feels all of that. It's like in the body, in the chair, sitting there in that life, redone by something that's in accord with divine presence or the self. This is how the God that we thought we had left would rather have us experience it. The self knows how to do that. Okay. I'll tell you a story. Need a little comedy in here. Um, this client I was working with, very willful guy. And, uh, you know, he would just bash into China shops in his life and cause damage. But he would just keep moving through experiences and relationships. And uh, so we did a regression back to the cause of this, what he labeled willfulness. And he, that was perfect for him. You know, like this. Walk around. You know, willful. And so he's back there and he's, and he's just been sent out of the Godhead. And he's standing there out in the cosmos, his own cosmos, and he sees this whole line arcing of globes, spheres, one after another. 
reaching way out, hundreds of them, or at least a hundred. And they're all his lifetimes to come, filled with willfulness. And the mother of God is standing over, I'm sorry? Yeah, so that's a motivator to change. Yeah, well, you would think. There's more. So the mother of God is standing over next to my client's right, client's name, Jim. And mother of God says to Jim, now, you know, Jim, this is not necessary. And he goes, and Jim goes, I will do it. And he, off he goes. <laughs> Okay. Any questions so far? Who's the mother of God? Well, ask. Ask her. I'm just a baby voice here. I understand. I understand. I don't have the answer for you. But you, you can come to it in yourself by asking about her. Yeah, well, it's, you could say it's an aspect of the divine. You know, many aspects, many faces, many elements. Mothering, mother is one aspect. 